Number 74. A wheel on a tractor has a 24-inch diameter. How many revolutions does the wheel make if the tractor travels four miles? All right, so let's take a look at the tractor tire. So here there's a tire and they tell us the diameter of that tire. They tell us it's going to be a 24 inch diameter. Okay. And this tractor tire will eventually now travel a total. Okay. A total length of four miles. So the first thing I kind of noticed already is that they gave me inches here and this is in miles. I have two units of length, but they're different. I'm probably going to have to do some conversion at some point in time. All right. Cause we won't be able to do this uh, with the current units. Um, so uh, let's not worry about that at the at the moment, at least. Uh, why don't we, the, the crux of this problem is to try to identify how is diameter here connected to, you know, this linear, uh, this linear length. Now, when the tire rotates, every single rotation, every one time this tire goes around, it covers one circumference of length okay every time this tire goes around one time it'll cover the length of this circumference okay so why don't we find that length first can't we find that because circumference is simply equal to pi well 2 pi r or pi d right where the r and the d represent the radius and the diameter respectively so the D here represents the diameter, so I can find that circumference, right? It would be just simply pi times then the diameter of 24 inches. So when we calculate this, we're going to get our answer in inches. So just go to your calculator, hit second pi, and then multiply that by 24. Cool. So we get 75.4 75 roughly all around, okay? And that's inches. That's now the length of the circumference. So every time a tire rotates one time, one rotation, or one revolution, whatever you want to call it, it's going to travel this length. So the question is, you know, so basically if you were to think about it in the picture, when this thing rotates one time, it's going to move, this is obviously not to scale, but 75.4 inches. So now my job is to figure out, well, if I know it's this, you know, chunk of length here, I'm trying to figure out, well, how many times is this thing going to have to rotate now, right? This would be one revolution, two revolution, three revolution, four revolution, five revolution, etc. Okay, that's my goal now. That's what I got to figure out. The first thing I'm going to do is, though, the first thing I'm going to do is try to convert my units to be the same. All right, so I'm going to convert inches into the miles. You can do it miles to, the, to inches. It really doesn't make a difference here, uh, but as long as they're consistent. So I'm going to do uh, the inch to mile conversion. Now you need to know how many inches there are in a mile. You might not, but uh, maybe you know that there are 12 inches in one foot, right? That you might know. This one you might be less familiar with, uh, but there is going to be 5,280 feet in one mile, okay? Those are the pieces of information we're going to need in order to solve the problem. So I'm going to move it up there. What I'm going to do now is take my given value of 75.4 inches. And to do this conversion, whatever unit I want to cancel up here, I plug into the bottom. Whatever unit I want to find, I'm going to plug into the top. Now, you might say, well, I want to find miles, so I'm going to plug it in. Now, you can, but the only problem is if you have inches here and miles here, what that means is that you know a relationship between inches and miles. Like how many inches there are in a mile or how many miles there are in an inch. Now, you might not know that. And that's okay. What that means is that you can't go to miles first. You have to first go to, let's say, feet. Okay. Now, if you hear the dog in the background, mail delivery, the mail delivery is being delivered. Mail delivery is being delivered. Is that redundant? I think it is. So what I'm going to do now is plug in my values here. Cause I know that for every one foot, there's going to be 12 inches. Okay. Now what will happen is these units inches will cancel. And this will tell me the number of feet 75.4 inches would be if I did the math that's here. But remember, I don't want to know feet, I want to know miles. So what I'm going to do is just do this again. Not with the same numbers, all right, but do it again in theory, right? So feet, I want them to cancel. So they go on the bottom. Now I'm like, okay, I want to get to miles. So do I know a relation between feet and miles? And yes, we do, right? That there's 5,280 feet in one mile. So now what we can do is cancel the units, okay, of feet. And the only unit that's left is miles. Now I can do the calculation here and 
you know, go to town. So since these two units are in the denominator, it's basically like saying you're gonna take 75.4, divide it by 12, and then divide that by 5,280. So when you go to your calculator, you already have this number as a prior answer, so just hit divided by. Now what's gonna happen is it takes that answer and plugs it in here for you, and you wanna take that value of 75.398, blah, 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 and divide it now by 12 inches times 5,280 feet. See, what's happening is you're dividing the entire answer, the entire 75, you know, 0.4, by this denominator value. That's why you need those parentheses, okay? Hit enter. Now, when you do that, we get a value here of 0 0.00119 or so, okay? Miles. Now, that should make sense, right? I mean, you know, 75.4. Wow, he's really going, he's really going crazy today. So, 75.4. What the heck is going on? The, the mailman's across the street, dude. Relax. Sorry if you hear him barking in the background. Oh, my God. Anyway, um, so it should kind of make sense, right? I mean, this is like this is almost like saying, uh, you know, one thousandth, you know, of a mile is equivalent to 75.4 inches. I think that should make some intuitive sense. So now with this in hand, okay, with this un with this value in hand, I'll put it over here for now. We can now finally find the number of revolutions, okay? So if this is the total length that has to be traveled, and you know that every single revolution travels a total distance of 0 0.00119 miles, what you will do now is you will do a division, okay? You're going to take your, the total length, so basically it's this, the total length traveled, length traveled, divided then by the circumference will equal then the number of revolutions, okay? Or rotations. So you just got to make sure that you have consistent units. So for miles, that was miles. This is going to be 0 .00, uh, 0.00119 miles. And that's going to tell you now just revolutions, okay? These units cancel. And the revolutions kind of comes up here because it's really miles per revolution. All right, revolution. And then when you divide miles per revolution, since this unit is in the denominator, and the denominator comes up into the numerator, but quite honestly, who cares, all right? Just do that value, so uh, just do that calculation. So you're gonna go to your calculator, do four divided by now, that answer from before. So just hit second answer, all right? And that takes the prior answer, just hit enter. So this is gonna be 3,000, 3,361. I'm gonna stop the rounding there, but you can keep going. When you get to fit, it would cut off, be cut off at one significant figure, but they, I know they're not going to do that in this book, and you're probably like, what the heck are significant figures? Uh, so don't worry about it, but for now, until you get to physics or chemistry or anything outside of just math. <laughs> Guys, take care. Hopefully this helps. I'll see you soon. Be well.